Hello and welcome to the Paradise Lost project, where we read through Milton's epic poem using different mics and preamps. We begin with the AKG 460 uh, body with the uh, CK61 cardioid capsule, and similar in time, uh, the uh, rarer Sennheiser MKH 406, that's the cardioid version of the very famous 416, probably from the 80s uh, vintage. This one's kindly lent by Hugh Snape. Thank you, Hugh, and I'm using it as much as I can before I have to send it back. And um, today these are being uh, powered by, just over my shoulder there you can see a little silver box. That is the Cooper Sound CS104 Hollywood preamps if ever there was any, but it also provides T-powering because this is the T-powered version of the 406. So let's, uh, having set the scene, let's dive in to Paradise Lost. Of man's first disobedience and the fruit of that forbidden tree whose mortal taste brought death into the world, and all our woe with loss of Eden, till one greater man restore us and regain the blissful seat. Sing, heavenly muse, that on the secret top of Horeb or of Sinai didst inspire that shepherd, who first taught the chosen seed in the beginning how the heavens and the earth rose out of chaos. Or, if Zion Hill delight thee more, and Siloah's brook that flowed fast by the oracle of God, I thence invoke thy aid to my adventurous song. That with no middle flight intends to soar above the Aeonian mount, while it pursues things unattempted yet in prose or rhyme. And chiefly, thou, O spirit, that dost prefer before all temples the upright heart and pure, instruct me. For thou knowest, thou from the first was present, and with mighty wings outspread, dove-like, satst brooding on the vast abyss, and madest it pregnant. What in me is dark, illumine, what is low, raise and support, that to the height of this great argument I may assert eternal providence, and justify the ways of God to men. Say first, for heaven hides nothing from thy view, nor the deep tract of hell. Say first, what cause moved our grandparents in that happy state, favoured of heaven so highly, to fall off from their creator and transgress his will? For one restraint, lords of the world besides. Who first seduced them to that foul revolt? The infernal serpent. He it was whose guile stirred up with envy and revenge, deceived the mother of mankind. What time his pride had cast him out from heaven with all his host of rebel angels, by whose aid aspiring to set himself in glory above his peers. He trusted to have equaled the Most High. If he opposed, and with ambitious aim against the throne and monarchy of God, raised impious war in heaven and battle proud with vain attempt, him the almighty power hurled headlong flaming from the ethereal sky, with hideous ruin and combustion down to bottomless perdition, there to dwell in adamantine chains and penal fire, who durst defy the omnipotent to arms. Nine times the space that measures day and night to mortal men, he with his horrid crew lay vanquished, rowling in the fiery gulf, confounded though immortal. But his doom reserved him to more wrath, for now the thought both of lost happiness and lasting pain torments him. Round he throws his baleful eyes that witnessed huge affliction and dismay, mixed with obdurate pride and steadfast hate. At once, as far as angels ken, he views the dismal situation waste and wild. A dungeon, horrible, on all sides round, as one great furnace flamed, yet from those flames no light, but rather darkness visible served only to discover sights of woe, regions of sorrow, doleful shades where peace and rest can never dwell. Hope never comes that comes to all, but torture without end still urges, and a fiery deluge fed with ever-burning sulphur unconsumed. Such place eternal justice had prepared for these rebellious. Here their prison ordained in utter darkness and their portions set, 
as far removed from God and light of heaven as from the centre thrice to the utmost pole. Oh, how unlike the place from whence they fell. There the companions of his fall, o'erwhelmed with floods and whirlwinds of tempestuous fire, he soon discerns, and weltering by his side, one next himself in power and next in crime, long after known in Palestine and named Beelzebub, to whom the arch enemy and thence in heaven called Satan, with bold words breaking the horrid silence thus began. If thou beest here, but oh how fallen, how changed from him who in the happy realms of light, clothed with transcendent brightness, didst outshine myriads though bright. If he, who mutual league, united thoughts and counsels, equal hope and hazard in the glorious enterprise, joined with me once, now misery hath joined in equal ruin. Into what pit thou seest from what height fallen, so much the stronger proved he with his thunder. Until then, who knew the force of those dire arms? Yet not for those, nor what the potent victor in his rage can else inflict. Do I repent or change, though changed in outward luster, that fixed mind and high disdain from sense of injured merit, that with the mightiest raised me to contend, and to the fierce contention brought along innumerable forces of spirits armed that durst dislike his reign, and me preferring, his utmost power with adverse power opposed, in dubious battle on the plains of heaven, and shook his throne. What though the field be lost, all is not lost. The unconquerable will and study of revenge, immortal hate and courage never to submit or yield. And what is else not to be overcome? That glory never shall his wrath or might extort from me to bow and sue for grace with suppliant knee and deify his power, who from the terror of this arm so late doubted his empire. That were low indeed. That were an ignominy and shame beneath this downfall. Since by fate the strength of gods and this imperial substance cannot fail. Since through experience of this great event in arms not worse in foresight much advanced, we may with more successful hope resolve to wage by force or guile eternal war, irreconcilable to our grand foe, who now triumphs and in the excess of joy, soul reigning, holds the tyranny of heaven. So spake the apostate angel, though in pain vaunting aloud, but racked with deep despair, and him thus answered soon, his bold compare. The first 125 lines of Milton's Paradise Lost on the AKG 460 and the Sennheiser MKH 406 through the CS 104. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do subscribe. It does help. Come back soon. Bye for now.